a bit brown on it. That smells Looks good, quite Nick. Nice, I have to say. I Looks so good. Looks very tasty. So there you are, full of goodness, awfully good. Well, apparently our uh, taste in food has changed dramatically over the past 50 years or so, and these days we're embracing all manner of exotic cuisine. But where did our uh, traditional food taste come from? Well, our Geraldine Harney headed out on a walking food trail right here in Waterford, and she discovered some interesting food facts. Peter's my name. Uh, I do uh, food tours of Dublin, and I was very grateful to be asked by Terra Madre to do a food tour of uh, Waterford. So uh, Terra Madre, of course, it's meant to be a great celebration of uh, Irish cuisine, everything we grow. And it's, it's about celebrating the ability we have to feed ourselves through, through the ages. And that's what we're going to look at uh, on, on, on this tour. I, mean, I, don't know, I don't know what your experience is. I, I don't know if you, you, know, if you meet sort of people who are not from Ireland and you know they're coming up with the question, uh, what is a typical Irish dish? You know, and and, and for, for, for many people, it's like being asked, you know, when you're getting on years, like, you know, could you speak a few words in Irish? The almost sort of terror, you know, it attaches you because we know it because you did it every day as a child, but actually having to speak about it. But that's what we're going to, we, we're going to look at on this tour today. Just, you know, that amazing tradition of food in Ireland, which goes back to earliest times and some of it, of course, which, which we've forgotten. We're going to start here in Christchurch Cathedral and we'll just talk about just the very origins of um, our food tradition. And there certainly is plenty of tradition in this city. Our first port of call is Christchurch Cathedral. Christchurch Cathedral here in Waterford, uh, it's the site of famously the marriage between Aoife and Strongo. But it's also within the church that we have our first knowledge of what people used to eat. When the Christian monks first arrived here 1500 years ago, of course, they are bringing the skill of writing and it's then we know about the menus of the past. And we moved on now, we walked down from the cathedral down to Henrietta Street and we're standing in the restaurant called L'Atmosphere. It's a French restaurant in the city. And restaurants were quite slow places to open in Ireland. The word restaurant comes from the word to restore yourself, a restauratif, which became very popular in Paris. This is pre-revolution time in the 1760s. Another historic building on the trail is the magnificent Reginald's Tower. Reginald's Tower, uh, one of the original buildings in Waterford, uh, founded by the Vikings, and then later rebuilt in stone by the Anglo-Normans uh, 800 years ago. Now, it's in Waterford that you have very interesting, you know, uh, food traditions. Uh, the tradition of curing bacon was believed to be started by a man called Henry Denny here in the 1820s. And of course, today we have um, Denny's uh, rashers. Another example here of, um, uh, you know, wh wh what people used to cook. We have in the corner over there, there's a pestle and mortar, which have been used to grind uh, certain things, probably, probably, probably meal. And over in the other corner here, we have example of spoons. It's interesting, spoons would have been used for eating broths, but it's only later, much, much later, that things like the fork arrives in uh, food, not really until the 17th, late 17th, early 18th century, that the fork is used amongst, uh, on, on the, at the table. But it's not just the cured rasher that comes from the Dacia city. As you can see behind, uh, there's a strong tradition of milling in uh, Waterford. Uh, Kilmac Thomas, there's been, uh, people have been, Flavins have been making oats there for the last six generations. And in 1885 in Waterford, uh, the Jacobs cream cracker was first created. This is of course created for uh, people going on long voyages uh, as far away as Australia. Rashers, cream crackers, whatever next will we uncover? Waterford has been trading for centuries with uh, other parts of the world. And one of the, of course, the big things which is arriving in a city like Waterford are uh, spices. And particularly spices such as cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger, pepper and mace. Now cinnamon is certainly a spice which is not something we would have been very much native to Ireland at all. I mean a society in Ireland where you know vegetables are you know herbs are kind of vegetable greeny looking something like cinnamon was hugely exotic. It was believed that by cooking with cinnamon you are bringing something what the Garden of Eden was meant to smell like through cooking cinnamon and these sort of you know exotic type spices. So they were hugely covetous, hugely expensive. Of course, no food trail in this city would be complete without mention of the blah. 
The bla is a very much traditional uh, bread found in Waterford, and it is a lot of variations of why it's called that. Most popularly, it's named after the French word for white, blanc, blanc. So we have this, the white bread, and it was very much a staple of the diet in Waterford City until still today. And it's with the bla that we conclude our tour. So what did those taking part think? I must say, I've enjoyed this. It was nice to wander around the places and get an idea of the history of the foods that were relevant to the area. And it's informative, it's fun, he does a good tour. And I've enjoyed it, it's very good. So up to a thousand people have gathered here in Waterford for this 